AMD Radeon graphics cards are bad for productivity. This is what everyone says online and even myself included. But after using my 6700 XT for about two weeks in my editing PC, I might just have to change that narrative because for video editing, Radeon's kind of valid. Behind me is my workstation and I use it for all of my well, work. From basic admin tasks where the GPU doesn't really matter, like Microsoft Excel and like Outlook and that sort of stuff, to video editing where the GPU matters quite a bit more. This PC does it all. In the past, I'd definitely recommend Radeon graphics cards for gaming, not so much for productivity. Here, I think Intel graphics cards and Nvidia GPUs were a much better option, or at least I thought because ever since using my 6700 XT for video and photo editing, I have to say AMD is quite valid for it now. And before this GPU, I ran an RK750 and that was absolutely brilliant. And if I wasn't trying out Radeon, I'd still leave it in my editing PC because it was that good. But that's nothing against the RX 6700 XT as from what we're about to see. Uh, you see what I did there? <laughs> Video editing is arguably the most important task that this PC partakes in or accomplishes or helps me accomplish, trying to find the right word for it. And that is because the GPU is leveraged the most here. In Adobe Premiere Pro, hardware acceleration is basically a necessity, especially when you're working with 4K, 10-bit, 422 footage from a Sony A7 Mark IV, because if this was just being encoded on the CPU with software, yeah, it would not be a fun time at all. The, the playback would be pretty bad. So it's good news that my RX 6700 XT with its OpenCL encoding and decoding works totally fine with my footage. There's no issue scrubbing through the timeline even while speeding through it, which I tend to do at 2x speed while I'm editing just to edit projects faster. And this is all at full playback res as well. So yeah, there's absolutely no problems with it. And it got to the point where I forgot I had the 6700 XT in my editing PC, which I think is a very good sign because that means everything's going really well. Was the playback as smooth as the RK750? I'm not too sure while scrubbing through at 2x speed, but in all fairness, it was definitely nothing to cry about or anything like that. I'd say it's definitely within margin of error. Maybe it's even placebo because I haven't actually done any benchmarks between these graphics cards and I'm just going off of my sort of personal experience, I guess. Also helping out with the timeline performance might be the quick sync in my Intel 13700K. This probably does help out quite a bit. So if you were on a Ryzen-based CPU or an FSQ Intel processor, your results may vary here, but regardless if you're a video editor, I definitely recommend Intel especially for H.264 codecs. And the final part of any video editing project is exporting. I would like to say the 6700 XT was slightly slower than the A750, only because I had to bump up the bitrate because the encoders on AMD graphics cards tend to be not as good as Intel and Nvidia. So to make out, to make out, to make up for that lack of quality, I've had to bump up the bitrate, but it's not that much of a problem in the grand scheme of things because when I'm exporting, that's when I design the thumbnail to the video. Yeah, like every single thumbnail that I've made is made within like 15 minutes, if that, on the channel. So it's not really that big of a deal that the 6700 XT is a bit slower to export. There was one issue that I ran into and at first I thought it was much bigger than what it actually was. When I exported the first video, which I believe was the GTX 1080 video, which you can watch up there, the playback in the video was just like really stuttery and it just wasn't good. Here I thought I was running into a rendering problem, but it turned out it was just a playback issue with VLC Media Player. Because I went into the legacy Windows Media Player and the playback was smooth and totally fine there. And none of you lot have complained about any video stuttering or anything like that for my past four uploads, which have all been done on this GPU here. So it's not really that much of a problem. I'll just use Windows Media Player from now on. It's not that much of a problem. <laughs> Unlike editing videos, photo editing doesn't leverage the GPU as much. I use Adobe's Lightroom Classic to edit my Sony ARW RAW files, and I don't know whether it's a bug or a feature, 
but Lightroom Classic tends to use a lot of video memory. So it's a good job that the 6700 XT has four extra gigabytes compared to the A750. And I do believe this might slightly be helping out, especially with the spot healing tool. Sometimes on the A750, it would start to stutter and such, but on the RX 6700 XT, that's been nowhere near as bad. Whether this is that VRAM related thing, or maybe it's because it's new drivers or something like that, I'm not too sure. But outside of the spot healing tool, using other features like applying presets, changing the exposure and the shadows and the highlights, and then doing masking feels exactly the same on the 6700 XT as it did with the RK750, so there's absolutely no problems there. As for Photoshop, the extent of my work here is YouTube thumbnails. These are very simple projects, so they're not complex at all. So I can't really comment whether the 6700 XT is better than the A750 or vice versa, as I simply do not use it for any advanced projects. I suspect the CPU would matter a lot more in Photoshop compared to the GPU, however. There won't be any gaming coverage in today's video because as we all know Radeon is absolutely fine and valid for gaming and if you think otherwise you're absolutely wrong. If you do want to see a video of me switching to AMD in my gaming PC however let me know in a comment down below and maybe that's a video project I could work on but for now we're going to be focusing on obviously the productivity side. There is one feature I will go over though, and that is the driver package. AMD's got a much better driver package than Intel in my opinion, as Adrenaline Software is just a lot more fleshed out than Art Control. And my biggest issue with Art Control is just simply just the lack of features and it just not being fleshed out at all. There's no hotkey for recording still after like a year of me, well almost a year of me using an Intel Art Card. But AMD and NVIDIA have had this for like years now. Also, I couldn't enable 10-bit colour on my monitor with the Intel Art graphics card for whatever reason, but I can on the 6700 XT. And this might actually make a difference to my work because I do work with 10-bit footage and it might help out with Sony RAW files as well, but the extent now I'm not too sure. So that was a big downside of the art card. In terms of other productivity like 3D modeling and CAD, I can't really comment on how the Radeon gets on here. I don't have any experience with either of these applications as I've got no use for them. So I can't 100% comment whether Nvidia, Intel or Radeon is better here. What I do suspect though is the CUDA of Nvidia graphics cards will help out quite a bit, but don't quote me on that. If you're looking for a GPU for one of these workloads, please watch the correct benchmarks. Conversely, if you're looking for a GPU for an editing PC, I don't think you can go wrong with Nvidia, Intel or AMD Radeon. They're all absolutely excellent options. Just go with a GPU which should benefit your workload the best. As for people saying that Radeon's absolutely useless for video editing or it's not as good or it's just not good in general, I'd like to say, you're probably wrong with that one because from my experience AMD Radeon is certainly valid for video and photo editing. So if you want to see how the RK750 my previous graphics card gets on in gaming there's a video up there for that. With that being said I'll catch you in the next one.